raging war with no end in sight. The war in Sudan, which started in April 2023, has defied solutions so far. Somebody with a bigger stick must enter into Sudan and try to, you know, talk to both parties to, 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 to halt. We are gradually seeing a failed state in Sudan. Uh, uh, once the state collapsed, you understand, the government can no longer operate, they cannot uh, enforce law and order. The terrorists will see it as a breeding ground for them to go and carry on their nefarious activities. The Astana forces that are involved in this crisis. So you find that it's difficult to actually initiate a, a, a proper, you know, um, solution because the other people will stand their ground, the other party will stand its ground because they have been supported by standard forces. The fierce battle was sparked by tensions between two military generals, Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, who is the leader of the official Sudanese army or SAF, and Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo or Hemeti, the leader of the paramilitary rapid support forces or RSF. They were allies. They both staged a coup to come to power before falling out. None of them are the mandate of the people. The so, so, so both of them, you know, they are fighting from uh, from the wrong uh, uh, angle because they were not elected by the people. You understand? So they, 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 they must be pressurized to step down. The now rival generals had joined forces to oust longtime leader Omar Hassan al Bashir in 2019. Then from 2022 to early 2023, tension between them worsened, particularly over a proposed integration of the RSF into Sudan's military forces as part of a transition back to civilian rule. So they brought them together to wrest power from the Sudanese people. They worked with uh, Oman Bashir. And when Oman Bashir fell from, from grace by refusing to honor the ICC uh, invitations and scorning the web, of course they had to do something about it. They overthrew him. And then the transition project refused to kick off. And what did they do? They divided the two friends to ensure, the two comrades, to ensure that they are in a fractured civil war with each other. One backing the other, another set backing the other. So the war is not actually the war of the generals. It's the war of the external force, using the generals of course. And that has been the portion of Africa over the years. The army and the RSF have ignored several ceasefire agreements. At least 3,000 civilians have been killed in the ongoing conflict and more than 6,000 others have been injured. About 4.3 million people have since fled their homes, according to the United Nations. They include over 900,000 refugees who fled to neighboring countries. Aid agencies warn that the unfolding humanitarian catastrophe is gradually being forgotten by the world. These leaders of global humanitarian organizations warn that the war is destroying people's lives and their homeland and violating their basic human rights. They call on the parties to the conflict to end the fighting, protect civilians, and give humanitarian organizations unfettered access to all people in need in all areas of Sudan. They remind the fighter that attacking civilians, looting humanitarian supplies, targeting aid workers and hospitals, or blocking aid, things we have seen throughout the war month, may amount to war crimes and crimes against humanity. The conflict has turned Khartoum and other urban areas into battlefields. Many residents live without water and electricity, and the country's healthcare system has nearly collapsed. The sprawling region of Darfur has seen some of the worst violence. We are seeing a repeat of it. The kind of condemnation I expect to hear from the from the international community, I think I'm not hearing it. Even the conflict going on between uh, between between the rapid support forces and the Sudan armed forces, between Hemeti and uh, Al Burhan, there is another dimension to it. What is happening uh, in Darfur and the Masani people? They are slaughtering the blacks. They are killing them. You understand? We are seeing a repeat of what this same Janjaweed did 
in, in, in 2001, 2003. Sudan has a history of instability. It has experienced several military coups and hope-filled popular uprisings. The most recent was the revolution that started in 2018, which culminated in the ouster of President Omar al-Bashir in 2019. The ongoing conflict is part of a series of political developments following the revolution. But then again, the country has had two civil wars since independence from Britain in 1956. Sudan's longest civil war occurred from 1983 to 2005 with an estimated 2 million people killed. Experts are warning of the implication of the current conflict on regional stability. A Sudan with a bail state is just uh, uh, a recipe for, for, for disaster for the entire East African bloc. On Sudan, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that last week... International mediation United efforts continue. Regional bloc IGAD, as well as the United States and Saudi Arabia, are pushing to secure a permanent ceasefire between the warring parties. For now, the death toll in Sudan is mounting. The humanitarian crisis is worsening and peace remains elusive. As it is right now, they've already divided the country into segments where they have their own struggles and being backed by different uh, external forces. That is why the war has been very fierce, and that is why the war has refused to go. Peace and stability in this country largely depend on genuine willingness of the generals leading the war to silence the guns.